My name is Ross Johnson and I'm Vice President of Magnetometer Sales at Geometrics. Today we're going to talk about some unique applications for some of our marine magnetometer configurations. In particular, we're going to talk about the transverse gradiometer for locating UXO. This was a project that was funded by the U.S. Navy for locating UXO in Pearl Harbor. The system comprises two optically pumped cesium vapor magnetometers. We see them here in a, a design drawing that shows the two sensors uh, linked together with a forward wing and a transverse spar for rigidity. The sensors uh, uh, are approximately 1.8 meters apart. In addition to the sensors and the wing uh, materials, we also have an altitude echo sounder. This gives us altitude above the seafloor, which is important for our later analysis. Also, there is a depth sensor, a pressure transducer in each of the two sensors, so that we have uh, proper depth configuration and also we are able to monitor the uh, that, that the wing is towing flat and level. Finally, we also have some dihedral wings that are attached to the fish bodies and this gives a restorative force to keep the uh, wing level and uh, sailing flat at uh, various toe depth and toe speeds. We'd like to uh, discuss a little bit about how the survey was performed. This is uh, on the island of Oahu, Pearl Harbor. Uh, you can see in this area there's a wharf and then these uh, parallel blue lines are the actual survey lines that uh, were performed. There are uh, approximately 100 lines. The uh, depth of the water was approximately 10 meters and the line separation was also approximately 10 meters. Okay, so once we had acquired the data, there were three different processing paths that we performed on the data. And it's important for us to understand each one of these because each processing path gives us a result that uh, helps us to understand the nature, <clears throat> the nature of the target and the type of UXO and the size and depth of its burial so that we can better understand how to use this data from the transverse gradiometer array we have a flow chart here that describes the processing steps on the left we have uh, apply diurnal correction if available and then create a total field map from that we make total field maps and also do some uh, inversion on the data in this case the diurnal correction came from a base station that was located on the island of Oahu. So we used uh, a local land-based base station to remove the uh, time variation data. <clears throat> we have a secondary data pa uh, processing path which is to convert the data into a quasi-analytic signal. What does that mean? Well we have a, uh, uh, a definition of quasi-analytic signal here where we have the transverse gradient, the longitudinal gradient, and the vertical gradient we square those values and take the square root. Uh, what we measure, of course, is the transverse gradient. Uh, we have two sensors. They're separated by 1.8 meters. We measure that at 10 times a second. We are also uh, dragging the array through uh, uh, the water along a track. And so we use the time gradient, the longitudinal gradient, to compute the uh, second term. Because we know the total field, we know the total field by averaging the two sensor information. And we know the uh, transverse and longitudinal gradient. We can compute the vertical gradient. So if we have a transverse gradient, the longitudinal gradient, and the vertical gradient, and square those values, sum them, take the, take the square root, we come up with a scalar value called the quasi-analytic signal. And what this does for us is produces a map that is not dipole in nature but all values are positive. It makes it easier to determine where the targets are and uh, also to see linear features that may represent cables or pipelines. 
When we plot the uh, quasi-analytic signal in a map form, we see that the, uh, each anomaly is positive and its location is more easily discernible as compared to a total field map. The total field map uh, shows the regional geology, also shows anomalies from uh, the wharf area, but you'll notice that uh, the anomaly signatures are not as clear as they are on the analytic signal map. So we, we use this to uh, more easily determine where the anomalies are and also using uh, full width half max rules we can uh, determine, uh, make some depth determinations using the quasi-analytic signal map. The third data processing procedure has to do with simultaneous dual inversion. I want to explain this a little bit. Um, inversion is the mathematical process by which we invert the data to determine precisely where the target is. From the shape of the anomaly, we can determine its size and its depth. And since we know the altitude of the array above the seafloor, we can determine the depth of burial of the target. We have a couple of graphics here which show the, uh, the inversion process and how the uh, transverse gradiometer improves uh, the solution. When we have a single magnetometer, we know that the uh, target is on a hemisphere uh, at a given distance from the sensor. In other words, the inversion process is omnidirectional. We're not sure where it is on that hemisphere. But when we have two sensors, we have two hemispheres which intersect at a given position. And from this dual simultaneous inversion, we can come up with a much better target analysis of its position and size and depth of burial. Here we see the actual procedure used in doing the simultaneous inversion. We plot both the left and right sensor and then apply a modeling technique that fits the model, the dipole pattern matching model, to the data. And we select these anomalies using markers set by the interpreter to limit the range for the inversion. Then the inversion is done automatically to give us latitude, longitude, position uh, below the seafloor. Here we see results of the anomaly pages as presented to the customer. For each target, we see the left and right sensor profiles. And then we see the actual target position and target numbers presented in a graphic. The program automatically gives us latitude and longitude for each target. It also gives us magnetic moment, an estimate of the mass, and its depth below the seafloor. Because we know the altitude of the array and we know the distance to the target, we can determine its depth of burial. So in summary, the transverse gradiometer uh, was used for a survey funded by the U.S. Navy in Pearl Harbor, Oahu, to locate surface targets on the seafloor. The uh, purpose was to eliminate any UXO or other contamination in this area. We provided the Navy with uh, target lists which the divers then uh, dove on and removed the vast majority, approximately 95 percent of the targets were removed. A secondary survey uh, identified approximately nine more targets which were subsequently removed as well. This paper was written by Mikhail Chernichev uh, Jeff Johnson and Ross Johnson from Geometrics and was presented at the uh, uh, American Geophysical Union uh, in San Francisco in 2008. We'd like to thank the U.S. Navy for allowing us to use this information and the data to present uh, this paper.